Hey, so the topic of today is, uh, well, actually, it's a bit more interesting than usually because uh, today I wanted to talk about dependent items. So dependent items and the master items, the benefits of those and uh, what you can get by using them. But uh, then I started to do some, some actual practical tasks that I wanted to show you. And uh, well, you know what? Uh, dependent items is uh, perhaps not enough for the full video. So by addition to the dependent items, I decided to also talk a little bit about the pre-processing. And uh, you know that Zabbix does support multiple uh, types and, and ways how you can do the pre-processing. As example, XPath, JSON pass, uh, regular expressions, of course, and also the JavaScript from the recent release 4.2. So today, I'll talk just about one of those, and that will be uh, XPath because, well, I remember like years ago, I made a workshop in the Zabbix conference about this topic. So it was something not, not very new, but still things were there to remember for me. So let's talk about a setup I have here today. Uh, just like usually Zabbix 4.2.1 uh, on my virtual machine CentOS 7 running from the Docker containers, uh, our official ones. If you don't know about it, uh, just check one of the previous videos. I've talked about it already. So, uh, what else? I've created a host uh, called Zabbix Series, and uh, this host is pointed to my virtual machine, and basically I have just eight items here, uh, one master item and a couple of dependent items. This one, master item, with the key bookstore, is HTTP agent item type. And I have here, let me open uh, 101 bookstore.xml. What I basically did, I was trying to find some kind of a service that could respond me with uh, interesting XML, but I was running out of the time, so I just uh, got some example XML from the internet, stored in uh, some text file and placed in the directory of the Zabbix frontend files. So just I can use HTTP agent item type to receive the history of this item, this item values as actual history, and then do the pre processing uh, based on uh, XPath with my dependent items. So, uh, a background. A little bit about the background, how the pre-processing actually works. I've already made some kind of uh, a bit ugly drawing here explaining what it is. So we have a data, some kind of the data coming in. This is a raw data, not processed by our any rules, all the stuff that we are gathering. Then in the Zabbix side, there are basically two types of the process responsible for this task, the pre-processing manager. So this will be the most serious process, uh, determining what to do with this data, get this data, send it to pre-processing workers, so pre-processing worker can actually execute all the steps we've configured in the front end. As example, today it will be an XPath, then it writes the data back to the pre-processing queue, and then the data, pre-processed data, is written to the history cache. So if we receive some large amount of the data here, in the output, we'll get desired value that we were looking for after the pre-processing by dropping all not related stuff. So let's take a look what do we have in the front end. So the full XML output. I will go to the monitoring latest data. Uh, full XML output. I've specified uh, that I want to keep a history, but it is not uh, the thing that you actually want to do. And about it just in a second. So this is the example. See, uh, XML 1.0, the bookstores, a uh, couple of categories like cooking, children, web, uh, and another web. And information about each book, like the title, author, uh, year, and a price of the book with some, some different values. So all this information, we actually don't need it. We need just some specific values from this XML uh, file this XML format. As example, some specific price or year or the name of the books. And we'll get to it later. So about a history, I left this with a default history storage period just to be able to show you in the monitoring latest data how it looks like. But actually it is the same as you can see here in my CLI. So 
got uh, bookstore.xml, same information that you can see in the front end. So what you should do in a monitoring uh, latest data example, uh, the one, our master item that is returning the full XML output, the recommended way would be to change history storage period, this one, to zero. And by specifying this to zero, it means that all of this amount of the data, all this XML content will not be saved to the database. So what will happen? I have my master item, this full XML output, and then I have configured dependent items. Let's say the master item receives the full XML line, then dependent items, each of them perform the pre-processing on this received value and extract the data that I've specified in the pre-processing steps. After what? All this full XML uh, document where, where just text will be thrown away. So we won't be wasting our database space. So uh, it will also positively affect the performance of the Zabbix. And that is definitely the best practice if you are using some kind of the items to receive a big amount of the text of the data and then just use a pre-processing to extract some meaningful. After that, no reason to keep this in the DB, just throw it away. So let's actually continue with the next pass. XPath was introduced in the Zabbix 3.4 uh, and it does support not only some just, uh, let's say, minor selections from the XML to select some attributes, but it also fully supports all the query language so you can perform some different calculations based on the XML data. As example, do the sum of some prices or uh, get some parameter of the book with the lowest price or stuff like that. So let's go one by one. Uh, first of all, count of the books. You see, this is uh, type is dependent item, where I specify that the master item is my full XML output item, the one which performs HTTP get to this page to receive all this. Then, nothing additionally configured here, just a history storage period as usually. There is no update interval specified because update interval is based on the master item. So each time this master item will receive a new data, also my dependent items will be populated. Then, uh, key, we just need to figure something out based on the syntax of the Zabbix, uh, but in any other cases it can be whatever you want. Then the most important thing, the pre-processing tab. And just one rule, XML XPAT with the parameters where we actually need to specify the XPAT query uh, in a correct syntax to get an output that we want to see. How to know all this? Uh, well, first of all, the Google will be your help. Uh, Google about the XPAT. Remember that Zabbix supports XPAT 1.0 version, not 2.0. So there will be a slight difference and limitation in terms of the query language that you can use. But as example here, like uh, W3Schools, you can get some basic examples how the XPath should look like to receive some kind of the result. Then, let's say I already have here count, bookstore, book. And it's actually a pretty straightforward, like uh, already by reading the parameters, we can understand what is happening here. So we are counting. Let's uh, look on our XML. How many books? One, two, three, four we have in our bookstore. And first of all, don't forget there is also a test functionality added in the Zabbix in a recent release. So let's say I've found out that I should use this parameter, but I'm not sure maybe I made some kind of a mistake. So what I can do, click on a test button. There we go, we can see the already pre-processing step. And in the value, we should just copy paste our XML document. So copy paste it here. There we go. Apply and click test. And you can see the result of our XPath parameter. Of course, if I would if I would be making some kind of the mistakes here, I would also see that in the test. Another option how you can test that if you don't want to use uh, Zabbix frontend for some reasons is a uh, CLI. So it is possible to do the XPAT also from the CLI. And the syntax is XML lint minus minus XPAT. 
then we need to actually write the expat query that we want to use. So it would be this, count, then count of what? The bookstore and the books. So we are counting all the books in XML and we need to specify which one. So bookstore.xml. And there we go, the output, four. See, works. The next, next option, uh, what else do I have? So this was pretty easy, like four books. Uh, we can verify that again in the XML. One, two, three, four. So absolutely true, uh, pretty simple. Of course, uh, let's say if you're using some HTTP agent to actually receive some kind of XML from your web services example, or maybe the SOAP request or something else, after each request, if that XML will change, of course, also the values uh, will be recalculated based on the pre-processing. So next one, a little bit advanced. Count of books with the language English. So let's take a look again on our XML. What do we have here? Like the bookstore, the book category, and then the title, language, English, English, Chinese, and also English. So in total in our XML file, we have four books and only three of them are English. Let's say in this example, we wanna calculate how many of them are actually with a specified language. So all we need to do, again, create a dependent item, Fill in the key, representing what you are doing, specify the master item, which again will be the one which is gathering the full XML request. Uh, go to the pre-processing tab and figure out the expat query that you should use uh, in a Zabbix to receive your desired result. Again, use Google expat uh, some cheat sheet or uh, PDF manuals, there's quite a lot of them. Uh, there are also some examples in the Zabbix documentation. So you could get this. Again, I am doing a count on a bookstore, book, then a title. So we have the language specified in the title, right? Language Chinese, language English. And uh, I have a filtering here, so only if the language is English. And let's test it out. Copy. Uh, again, let's do the XML lint minus minus expat, provide the parameters and uh, the XML file, the bookstore.xml. And we have three, which again is absolutely true because uh, the fourth book is Chinese. And we can verify in a monitoring latest data that yes, we have count of the books four, uh, count of the books with language English three. And let's try uh, how to count the oldest books. So we see that we have also the value year, when the book was written in this XML. And uh, the first one has 2005, then 2003, another one 2003 and 2008. So let's say we want to calculate first of all, the book and the year, which is the oldest one in our bookstore. And then we want to calculate how many books do we have with this oldest year. So the pre-processing XML path looks like this. Count, bookstore, book, year, and then this is uh, a bit not uh, self-explaining syntax because we must use expat 1.0. So we need to do this. Basically select each year and cal uh, compare it with each another. If we would be able to use expat 2.0, we would be able to use just function min or max on some of the XML attributes. But we must do this. Still not a problem, uh, we can test it, Control c XML lint, just like we did before, minus minus six pat, function, and bookstore.xml. So we have two books with the most uh, oldest year. And this is book one, and this is book two. So again, true. What kind of other examples do we have? Uh, Maximal price of all the books. Again, might differ with each uh, HTTP agent or any other type of the item that gets the full output. And let's say you want to get some kind of a maximal value. In this example, we're talking about a books, but uh, it can be whatever else, right? We might be some uh, doing some monitoring on the application level, on the services or whatever else. So uh, pre-processing number, I, spe I am specifying that I want to receive a number. Otherwise, I would see uh, the price in, in the price tags. So number, bookstore, book, price, 
and again the syntax for expat 1.0 to receive uh, which was this the cheapest or the maximal price you can execute this again xml lint i'll do it like this count number books or book price not uh, check again one each another and we can see that the highest price from the xml is 49.99 and we can actually verify that this is true. So, uh, I don't know, we could be talking about each of these uh, for uh, newest book, oldest book and total price of all books, but actually the logic doesn't change. Just the pre-processing uh, query of the expat is changing. The logic is pretty simple. Again, let me try to draw here. So, we have full XML output item and then we have all of these small dependent items where each of them is extracting something specific from this full XML output. And then this is thrown away. No reason to keep it inside the database. So, yeah, uh, I don't know, I perhaps, uh, I don't know, write in the comments, like if you want me to share this template uh, somewhere so you could just download it and uh, check all those expat uh, parameters and queries I wrote here, just let me know in the comments. Deal? Like I won't upload it anywhere right now because it's not really meaningful and you will must have the XML file specified to actually use it. But if you want to see these uh, expat queries, just let me know in the comments. And uh, long story short, this is a very powerful tool. Like remember before the version 3.4, if somebody wanted to monitor XML documents, XML outputs from the scripts, from the commands, again, all of the stuff should be done uh, outside of the Zabbix with the scripts and then just feed the Zabbix with already gathered, analyzed, pre-processed, transformed values. Right now with the pre-processing functionality, we can throw away all of those custom solutions, all of those custom scripts, just get a value, analyze it outside uh, with a Zabbix in the front end without any, again, third-party tools, just specify the expat queries, uh, do some more serious calculation, not only extract some one single specific value, but do those like uh, select highest price or select the name of the highest price or the oldest year or the newest year. So there's pretty a lot of examples you can do with this and uh, the tool itself is very powerful. And don't remember that this is just one pre-processing type that you can use, uh, not that you can use, but about which I'm talking in this video. So we still have quite a lot. Let's go into pre-processing. We could add another step and choose any of these. So there's still a lot of things to talk about and uh, we'll see maybe the next one video might be about some, some other steps. And we also didn't touch about, uh, about what? Uh, custom on fail. Like uh, this is also a new functionality. If the regular expression, if the XML pass or the item itself fails, we can specify what do we want to do, discard a value at all or set it to something pre-configured or just set a custom error that uh, this doesn't work. Again, uh, the functionality is quite wide and uh, you need to decide how to use it and how to get best out of it. From me today, I think that it, that is it about the expat. Uh, as usual, if you have any other questions, comments, uh, feedback, whatever else, just post it in a comment. Um, quite a long time we haven't made a Q&A video and I do see that in the comments we have uh, quite a lot of good questions. So Q&A video probably is coming up. I'm not sure when it actually be out, but soon. So this is the point where we should start thinking and searching for another guy who will assist me in, in shooting that video. So hope to see you soon again in, in the next videos. Uh, click that like button, click the subscribe if you like these videos. And uh, just like usual, thank you for your time and goodbye. Have a good week.